Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Singing together. Mighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. May God be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is found on page four, an introduction. The people of Israel have received the Ten Commandments verbally, but Moses is still up on Mount Sinai receiving them in writing. Exodus chapter 32. When the people saw that Moses delayed from, to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. And so the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he took the gold from them, formed it into a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel. You brought them up from the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people who you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who you brought up from the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these, this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it is with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars in the heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. We'll now say together Psalm 106 on page 5 of the bulletin. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord? Who will show forth all his praise? Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help. 
that I may see the prosperity of your elected and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory in your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebearers did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb, and so they exchanged their glory for an image of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wonderful deeds in the land of Ham, and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would not have destroyed them had not Moses chosen and stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. Our epistle is on page six of the Bolton, an introduction. Paul began the conclusion to the letter in the previous chapter after a digression to warn against heresy and self-indulgence and to urge devotion to Christ, he tries to finish the letter with certain concerns and true. Philippians chapter four. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord this way, my beloved. I urge Yodia and I urge Sittiki to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companions, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be, known, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. 
he sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Our readings this morning are deep, deeply challenging, I believe. And yet they invite us to consider how we become separated from God. Not only us, but people in the Exodus and people in, the God, in Matthew's time. It invites us to consider how we lose the sense of God in our lives, how we choose wrong things, how things separate us from God. So let me give you a little bit of context to the, the first reading, the reading in Exodus. Now, Moses had gone up to the mountain. He told the people that he would be back soon, but 10 days turned into 20, 20 turned into 30, and before they knew it, he was gone for 40 days seemed like a lifetime for the people, and they became restless. They couldn't wait for their leader to return, so they looked to Aaron, Moses' brother, to provide an alternative, to give them something new. The story of the golden calf is well known, perhaps one you learned in Sunday school as a child. But it's also a reminder that how easily we fall prey to seeking things may comfort us or we think may comfort us when in fact the one thing that can comfort us even in the sense of lack of leadership and lack of presence in our lives we know that God is there and that God had never left the people the interesting part of the story is though that God comes down and he's kind of angry at the people he's like well I was Moses was gone for 40 days and you forgot about me and so I, I I'm gonna have some anger at these people but Moses says no the people are good and righteous they just lost their way just for a short time. Come back to them, remind them that you've never left them. And so God relents. It's one of those lovely stories where God changes his mind. So intriguing. Now the, the gospel passage is even more challenging. Let me give you a little context into it. Jesus has gone into Jerusalem. Remember, we're talking about Holy Week, the triumphal entrance. He's going to be the savior of all people. It's so wonderful. He's turning over the world. He's bringing a new kingdom. They're waiting for him. And then he's getting challenged by the Pharisees and the scribes. He's being challenged by the ruling leadership. And they're saying to him, what right do you have to come in triumphantly? What right do you have to promise something new? And so there's this overarching sense of violence and threat in Jesus when he's telling this parable. And also the Gospel of Matthew at this particular point was written when the temple had been burned down and the people that Matthew was writing for had experienced violence and death and the burning of their city. And so the violence in this particular parable, did you hear it? God went out. 
and supported the killing of people, of murderers. And it's hard for us to fathom a God who would bring in violence into our lives. It's hard to fathom a God that would encourage others to rise up against other people for a sense of false justice. And sadly, this text has been misused and abused to foster colonialism in times past, to say that putting down people and oppressing people and killing them for the sake of God was something that was righteous and given. And it's something we sit with today. It's a passage that makes it hard for us to understand knowing the loving God that we experience in our lives. I've read countless commentaries on this particular passage and there's no clear answer. There's no clear direction that says that God really seeks violence because throughout the good news, the gospel, Jesus seeks peace, not violence. So we take it as a contextual presentation in a moment in time but not a representation of the God who loves us and the God who seeks peace and justice. But remember, the king in this story invites people to a feast of joy and possibility, huge feast of all things for all people, both the good and the bad. But the people still don't understand what they're being invited to. They go out and do their normal lives. They forget that God had invited them to the, the abundance of life, the possibilities of hope and justice, abundance, even in the sense of darkness. And so we recognize that this parable presents tremendous challenges and tremendous opportunities to think about the invitation that God extends to each and every one of us the table is set for you, the table of abundance in the midst of violence, the table of love in the midst of hate and fear. And it also is a representation of the heavenly banquet, the foretaste of what we'll be given when we come to our eternal rest. We know that those who have gone before us rest easy in God's love. We know they rest at the heavenly banquet fed and nourished by Jesus' promise of resurrection and new life. We know that the new kingdom here on earth that we long for and that we hope for is the kingdom that we are promised, the heavenly banquet. And even in the midst of this confusing parable and the story of Moses and this, this challenge that we're faced with violence and an, an angry God, we can reflect on what it means for our own spiritual journey. What do we do with our own anger? What do we do with our own frustrations? Perhaps the hatred that may live in my heart. How do we live through that and seek instead the kingdom of God here? I wanna explore one final idea in the gospel parable this morning. It's the guest, did you catch it at the very end? He was invited off the street to the wedding banquet and when he got there, the king said, hey, friend, you're not dressed right. Well, the friend didn't know he was going to be invited to a wedding banquet. So how would he possibly know what to wear? And was there a little sarcasm in the friend thing? Perhaps. But it's clear that he had no time to think about what he was going to wear when he was invited and how he was going to clothe himself when he was presented to something more magnificent than himself. In the prayers of the people, which we'll share together in a few minutes, we say that we want to clothe ourselves in garments befitting the people and God. We want to clothe ourselves in the righteousness and love of God. We want to be dressed appropriately in our hearts and in our souls, not in our physical appearances. We want to clothe ourselves for a spiritual journey so we're prepared for the days ahead. And Paul's letter in the Philippians gives us the sense of how to clothe ourselves. People in Philippi were fighting. There was major infighting. No one was getting along. And he says, clothe ourselves in things that are true and honorable and commendable and just and pure and pleasing to God. Clothe ourselves in those things. That is what the spiritual journey 
in the midst of the chaos in the world around us, in the midst of violence and fear and uncertainty, clothing ourselves for the spiritual journey. One of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, says, we should not clothe our souls in something that looks good in the lights of the present, but in the daylight for the next. Every day we grow, grow closer to the heavenly banquet in our lives. Every day we go, grow closer to seeing God face to face. Knowing that knowledge, knowing that the heavenly banquet awaits you and that the kingdom of God is in breaking here, I invite you to consider how will you be clothed in the weeks and months ahead against divisive rhetoric, false narratives, threats of violence? Will you clothe yourself like Paul has invited us to see goodness and gentleness, justice and kindness, and love towards others with a heart set on the promise that the kingdom can be here and now that awaits us the very same kingdom in eternal rest. Let us stand and affirm our faiths in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Moses interceded with God for the sake of the people, so let us offer our intercessions on behalf of others, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. That we may clothe ourselves in garments befitting the faithful, compassion, joy, generosity, gladness of spirit, intentionality of lifestyle, and dedication to the way of our beloved Jesus. Let us pray. That the church may be a refuge for the poor and lost, the lonely and those who hunger after righteousness, revealing through fragile human beings the signs of God's glorious kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our time, that we may not linger in our efforts to secure hope for the peoples of the world and the prosperity that peace inspires. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may not make idols out of the many technologies and consumer products that entice our imaginations, but use them as tools for God's mission and glory. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the departed may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the beauty of the earth, the fruits of the sea, the rising and setting of the sun, and all the marvelous gifts of God's creation, that in our wonder we may rededicate ourselves to a stewardship of the environment, so that the generations to come 
may enjoy such pleasure. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We continue our prayers in Christ, whose mercy endures forever. For Greg, John, Will, Beatrix, Bruce, Pierce, Vivian, Alan, Melissa, Anne, Janet, Margie, Norm, Mary, Beryl, Gail, Claire, John, Jan, Roland, Joseph, Kathy, Annie, Clara, Caro, Beth, Madison, Lynn, Joan, Jerry, Matthew, John, Kendall, and Mike and Mitchell, who have served in our armed forces. And we pray for our president, Donald J. Trump. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done, and by, and by what we have left undone. We have, have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please exchange a socially distant sign of peace. Please be seated.
you stand, please stand as you're able. <laughs> May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right, right to give, give our thanks and praise. praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness in your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, filling our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God. Deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, that were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross, the sacrifice of his life, and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God, of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves the living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Holy Spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Paul and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. The feast of the bank were prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please be seated. I will come around and offer you communion. Feel free uh, to receive or not as you would, would prefer. Uh, I ask that you wait until I go past you to, before you actually take in the communion. Um, so we have some extra safety and social distancing. I'm also going to be distributing the communion with tongs, so I have not touched the hosts.
it.
our prayer after communion is found on page 13 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you have graciously, graciously accepted, accepted us as living members of your Son, Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, and you, you have, have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, thank you for joining us in our first uh, Eucharist since March 1st. Uh, it's been a long time that we've celebrated together, and I'm grateful for your presence here. Um, the protocols we followed were sort of a combination of several we found for safety. So um, we're trying to keep everybody safe and uh, also nourished in the word and sacrament. So grateful that we're here together on this glorious fall day to be uh, honoring God. Discovery Hour continues at 1030 this morning on racial reconciliation, the church and our faith. Um, we're continuing the Sacred Ground program. We'll be watching a couple of short videos. Our neighbor to neighbor food drive is Thursday morning. What we've heard is the, food, the need for food has doubled um, since the pandemic started. So we invite you to come uh, Thursday mornings to drop off your food. It's a contactless food uh, drop off. Mindfulness in the Meadow is Wednesday at 10 o'clock with Father Eric and yoga on Fridays at 10 o'clock. Also please RSVP to attend either program. And of course our online Zoom evening prayer is every Thursday at seven o'clock. So many ways to connect with us over the course of the week, do good in the world and experience the kingdom here in St. Paul's and in Riverside. Next week, we have a change in services, service time, and we're opening up the sanctuary for our first services. Beginning at eight o'clock next Sunday, we will have worship in the sanctuary, a right one Eucharistic service, um, our normal eight o'clock service, socially distanced, with well under 45 people allowed in the sanctuary. So you need to call please and reserve a spot on Tuesday or go to an Eventbrite site, which we'll send out um, to reserve your place for an eight o'clock if you wanna be inside the sanctuary. Um, but we're continuing to offer the outdoor services the weather permits. So at 10.15, back to our normal times, remember eight and 10.15, that was pre-pandemic, eight o'clock inside, 10.15 outside. So you have two options for joining us in community and being uh, supported and sustained by the community and the body of Christ right here in Riverside. So please do continue to join us. Um, I think that's the extent of our announcements for the morning. Uh, we will be serving coffee in the back, socially distanced, very careful. So grab a cup of coffee if you like on the way before you leave and chat with some of your friends and people you haven't seen in a while. Are there any October birthdays we might have missed. I don't think we did it last week. I was out sick. Anybody want to come up for a birthday breath blessing? Come on up. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on Amanda and Jean Marie as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in the goodness all the days of their lives. We ask this in your name. Amen. Happy birthday. And for our final blessing. Life is short. We don't always have time to gladden the hearts of those we meet. So make haste to love and to do kindness. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen. <clears throat>
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.